Wolfpack has recently acquired a Vicus femtosecond platform for the purpose of doing femtosecond assisted cataract surgery. This video goes over one of the first few cases that we did using the calcellotomy and fragmentation algorithms. This video is completely unedited. We're going to start here by looking at the view the surgeon has when using Victus. On the left hand side here, you're going to see an image of the eye as seen through the patient interface. The 10 LED lights there are there to project an image onto the cornea that help with centration and docking of the eye with the interface. As the patient is moved closer to the interface, you're going to see the image of the eye become more clear and eventually as there's contact with the surface of the cornea, the fluid that's been placed on the cornea gets pushed away. We're going to overpressurize the docking mechanism against the eye to get rid of the bubbles there. Once the bubbles are gone, we're going to come back on the pressure as you can see the gauge there on the right hand side of the screen. Once this is done and we've gotten to the middle of our pressure sensing right there, what we're going to do is lock the suction cup in place and you will not see any more movement of the eye. This allows the technician or the surgeon to go ahead and start marking the margin of the pupil here using three points. Once that's done, that's going to delineate where the capsulotomy is going to be performed. Then we're going to start looking at the OCT here in the middle of the screen and mark the anterior surface of the capsule using three points. When we hit the posterior button, we're able to look at the back of the lens to demarcate the posterior capsule using three points. This needs to be repeated at the 90 degree meridian as well. This allows a three dimensional view and analysis of the lens to come up with a fragmentation pattern. The green area that you see is the area in which energy will be delivered. There is a one millimeter safety zone between the posterior limitation of energy delivery and the posterior capsule. When we kick on the capsulotomy, what we're able to see is the column of energy that will be applied to the anterior capsule. And we want to make sure the anterior surface is within the vertical height of that column, 360 degrees. The next step is to ensure our applination pressure is adequate, which is indicated by the yellow bar on the right hand side of the screen. Once this is done, we click start and the green box comes up indicating to the surgeon that it's okay to start therapy. After a few seconds, you'll start to see the bubbles coming up as the laser is delivered to the capsorexis. This only takes about four seconds. There is a bit of a delay as the computer switches over to the algorithm for lens fragmentation. The laser delivery pattern is indicated by the white lines. The circle represents the capsorexis, which is five millimeters in diameter. The six radial cuts there represent the fragmentation, and you can see that they are approximately six millimeters in diameter, extending beyond the capsulotomy. Momentarily, you'll see the lens fragmentation starting here, and you can see an intralenticular bubble forming as the laser energy is delivered. Some of these bubbles do come anteriorly, but the bulk of this bubble stays within the substance of the lens. Finally, as the treatment is completed, the patient is pulled away from the patient interface. The next step is to take the patient over to the main OR and complete the rest of the surgery. Here, after making the side port incision, I'm going to inject the viscoelastic. If you're really sure that the capsule is free floating, you can use the viscoelastic to float off the capsule, but certainly in the beginning it's probably wise not to do so. You can see here the injection of viscoelastic pushing the bubbles out and getting a clear view of the capsule. Next I'm going to make the main incision. This is a 2 to 2.2 millimeter trapezoidal blade. We do do a mix system and find it to be very effective. Here I'm going to hold on to the side port blade just as a habit, what I usually do for most of my cases. And I'm going to take the utrata forceps and I'm going to grab the middle of the capsulotomy and just create a small circular pattern to ensure that I have a free floating capsule just in case there are any adhesions. Here you can see there are absolutely no adhesions and the capsule comes out very easily and cleanly. In the next step with hydrodissection, I'm typically very aggressive with my hydrodissections, but here because of the intralenticular bubble, I proceed very cautiously because I'm concerned about overpressurizing the capsular back and creating a blowout of the posterior capsule as has been reported by some other femto users. I'm going to continue to just gently hydrodissect here, adding a little bit more BSS and gently rocking the lens. With time, eventually the bubbles do come around and you can see here the bubbles moving forward into the anterior chamber. On further cases beyond this, I've learned that I can actually proceed with a regular hydrodissection and again just strategically push down and blot the lens in the area where there is bubbles and they do come forward quite easily. Here you can see here I've got good rotation of the lens and those bubbles have completely come up into the anterior chamber and we can proceed with phaco. Bringing in the phaco tip here, I do like the mix system. The only caveat being here that it does take some time a little longer to adjust the sleeve here as you see me doing. I like to hold on to the main wound as I put the phaco tip into the anterior chamber which gives me good stability. I'm going to bring in my chopper here, get rid of the bubble, and start disassembling the nucleus. 
I do like to quick chop all my lenses in traditional Faco, and I'm just grabbing a little bit of the lens here and using the chopper in the crevice that's already been created by the Femto, and you can see how clean those cuts are. You don't need to, but I'm going to go around here for illustrative purposes and go in and break up each one of these pieces here. And once again, this is a fairly dense lens. This is about a plus two to three lens. You can really see the substance of the lens, but you can also see how cleanly the Femto has actually cut up the pieces. Finally, I'm going to bring this one piece up into the anterior chamber and start with evacuation. My partner and I tried a number of different fragmentation patterns before we settled on this one. The other ones that we looked at had a number of arcs that were set circumferentially to create cylinders within the lens. We didn't like those because as quick choppers we found that the moment we tried to impale in the eye, we lose a lot of the substance that was required to get purchase on the lenses. You can see here that we're getting immediately good purchase on the lens right from the center. And so we found that the six radial cut was the ideal amount of fragmentation. Four cuts left the pieces too big for evacuation and eight cuts left them too small. We've used the six radial cut technique since we've started using Victus and we haven't changed. The other parameters that the circuit control are spot spacing, which is the distance between the laser spots on an XY axis, the line spacing, which denotes the spacing of the laser spots on the Z axis, and of course we can vary the amount of energy delivered per spot. We haven't played with these settings yet, so we don't have an appreciation what modifying these parameters do. The one thing we have changed, however, is the safety margin between the posterior capsule and the posterior limit of energy delivery now to 800 microns, and we haven't had an issue thus far. Quick word here on the microincisional cataract surgery platform. Even though I've got my chopper back here as an extra safety measure, you can see there's incredible chamber stability, indicated by the fact that there's no billing of the posterior capsule and complete stability of the iris as we're going after the last pieces here. There's a bit of a posterior plaque and again switching over to the epinuclear mode here, I'm able to gently manipulate this into the phaco tip and tease it out. One of the challenges with irrigation and aspiration of the cortex in these cases has been the fact that there's no wisps of cortex that extend beyond the anterior capsule that you can pick up easily with your IA tip. The one thing that we haven't seen is this idea that you get fusion of the cortex with the anterior capsule as has been described on other femto platforms. You can see here that once you get underneath the anterior capsule, the cortex strips very easily and doesn't leave any remnants on the anterior capsule. Quick word on microincisional cataract surgery here again. You can see that when we do irrigation aspiration, the sleeve on the IA tip here completely obstructs and seals the corneal wound. As a result, there's very little to no fluid egress through the corneal wound, resulting in tremendous anterior chamber stability, which really allows us to go after that subincisional cortex much easier than it would if we had a leakage around the IA tip. Particularly in femtoassisted cataract surgery where that subincisional cortex is much more difficult to get, this really does allow an advantage. Now that being said, probably in about 30% of our cases, we do need to use a bimanual irrigation aspiration setup to go after that subincisional cortex. However, with persistence and being relatively safe here, with the chamber stability that we have, I am able to completely remove all the cortex here with a straight IA tip without requiring bimanual irrigation aspiration. Just a side note here, you can see a few particular hemorrhages that are left here on the subconscious area over the sclera as a result of the suction. We do see a bit of a variety of subconscious hemorrhages. This is a fairly average amount as seen in the patients that we've done to this point. For the little wisps of cortex that are left in the posterior caps, or even a little bit subincisionally, I find this what I call a power wash. A good strain with bound salt solution directed at the posterior capsule is very effective at getting rid of those little wisps that just don't seem to go away. This is a good time to point out that this patient has pseudoexfoliation, and you can see a bit of the bull ring sign left on the anterior capsule there. Again, I think femto is a great indication for these patients because it's certainly a lot less traumatic because of the intraoperative manipulation. Now this is something that I like doing in all patients. I initially started with crystallins patients only, but I've moved to all patients. And that's polishing of the anterior cortical leaf from epithelial cells. I'm convinced that these patients have decreased post-operative inflammation, have decreased CME, and probably have better effective lens positions because of a reduction of aberrant scarring of the posterior capsule. So I'm fairly aggressive about this. In this particular case, I'm using a modified Shepard Whitman polisher. It's got two ends, one which faces right and the other that faces left. So you get the entire amount of the capsule. Now subincisional polishing with this device is a little bit tough, but with persistence, you can get most of it. The other thing that I do use, which I'm not going to show in this video here, is something called a Singer Sweep. It is a device that can go both through the main wound as well as a side port. 
incision to get the subincisional epithelial cells. I usually do spend about two minutes doing this on average per case, which is not insignificant over the course of the day. However, I've seen the results and I'm convinced that this is something that's worthwhile doing. I'm going to go off screen and grab my lens. I do like to load my own lenses. In this particular case, I'm using the Invista lens. This is a new hydrophobic acrylic IOL that has been approved by the FDA as being glistening free. I've been using this lens for about six months now and implanted about 100 lenses and I'm very happy with the results. The acrylic is a lot tougher than other hydrophobic acrylics that we're used to, so it does take a little bit more manipulation to load and it does take a lot longer to unfold in the eye. Now I'm doing a wound assist through the 2-2 incision and all of these lenses are able to go through that without an enlargement. You can see here the lens does take a little bit of extra time to unfold, but much like all the other one-piece lenses that we're used to, it behaves much in the same way, just a little bit more slowly. While we watch this lens unfold, I'll just make a quick comment on anesthesia. One of the things that I've really appreciated with these patients is that actually breaking up the procedure into two separate cases, I've actually found that patients have responded to that fairly well. When they have their femto, they're not subjected to a full prep or drape, which is fairly intrusive. With a bit of sublingual Ativan, they're tremendously relaxed, and when they're done and they've experienced no blackout on their vision and little to virtually no pain or no sensation, and you've told them half their case is done, they're tremendously relaxed when they come into the operating theater and they do have to get that prep and drape. In the 30 patients that we've done so far in our clinic, we've only had to use IV sedation, and that was on the very first patient because it took a little bit longer just with the whole process to figure out what we were doing. And since then, our patients have done remarkably well with that sublingual Ativan. Going back to the case here, we're just finishing up after removal of the viscoelastic. I'm just going to push this lens just into a bit better position because it hasn't quite fully unfolded yet. And once it is, you'll see that the lens is well centered and that rexus is perfectly round and perfectly centered on the eye wall. I hope to share more about our experiences with femtosecond technology and the pearls that we've learned. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you.